Hello everyone, Kung here. So I wanted to make a video where I address two things. One, I want to talk about my passive tree that I have on my character. Um, and the second thing I want to do is talk about gearing choices. So the first thing that I have pulled up here is the passive tree for my max block blade vortex character. So I first just want to pan around so you can see all the points I picked up. And so the major theme with this character is is I want I was wanting to path to where all the block nodes were as well as trying to pick up all the efficient life that I could. The other thing that I wanted to do was given that we're in the southern portion of the tree, I wanted to try and pick up as many jewel sockets that were going to be efficient, so all two point or one point jewel sockets and I also wanted to pick up as much strength as possible. And the reason that I wanted to get these two items is because um, being in the southern portion of the tree and being a spellcaster, our options for scaling blade vortexes damage are really limited. So jewel sockets are one primary area where we're able to do so, and strength to scale um, the strength bonuses through iron will is the other way in which um, blade vortexes damage is scaled. Um, the other component that's really important from the tree is to pick up as much area of effect as possible. The only area of effect that I have on the tree is up here in the Templar starting area. And so that's the basic overview for the tree. Um, you can find a link to what my tree looks like both for the offline skill tree planner as well as for um, the Path of Exile website's version um, in the guide that's linked below this video. So while I have the tree up, I also want to go ahead and hover over my jewels so you can see um, what types of things that you're looking for. You'll notice I actually only have one block on, or 1% chance to block with sh um, shields on only one of my jewels, and I'll talk a little bit further about this um, in the video. But the primary attributes you want to look for on jewels are number one, life, and then anything that you can use to scale blade vortexes damage. So area damage, physical damage, spell damage um, are all going to be um, different types of, of attributes that you'd want. And a little bit of cast speed is also nice as well. And so you can see spell damage, physical damage, life. That block spell damage, life. Um, area damage life and I'd regaled fire resistance which is nice but not mandatory by any means and then here you can see that we have life and a little bit of cast speed and the regal for the two energy shield bricked and in three more levels I think it would be nice to be able to pick up this jewel socket over here to get a little bit more life so the ascendancy class that I chose was the gladiator and the major reason for this was is it's a great place where we can get more additional block and it does two other things so number one pain forged gives us a huge amount of block if we've been hit recently within the past four seconds um, and this is really the key the key um, uh, ascendancy passive what this one do passive does versatile combatant is it takes all the block that we get from um, blocking attacks and it applies it for spells and you can actually see this right here when it shows up with the chance to block attacks and the chance to block spells. So when my character's unbuffed, I have 64% chance to block. If I get hit, which you typically do because you can't block 100% of the attacks or spells that are sent your way, that 8% block kicks in and we go to 72%. And then Tempest Shield, um, I have up on this character which gives me three block and that's how we're able to reach 75 percent block cap without having to use roomies or any other kinds of special gear. The shield that I'm using also only has a 30 percent base block chance and so that's what I'm scaling off of as well and so depending upon the block chance and the shield that you select you might not even need block from some of the jewels on the tree or you might need more block. And so the order in which I picked these up was first Pain Forge, second Versatile Combatant, and when you pick this one up from the Cruel Labyrinth, you'll notice 
a distinct increase in your survivability and this is the third one so another reason for selecting this um, uh, champion or not champion uh, gladiator ascendancy support is you'll notice that this gives me 40 percent increased damage if um, I haven't taken damage in the past four seconds so if I haven't taken damage from hits recently we get a nice damage boost and the other thing is is violent retaliation is really another place where we're able to get boost uh, damage boost so we get a four percent increase in physical damage and not physical attack damage but physical damage in general as long as we've blocked um, for each time that we blocked recently and so with that 75 percent block cat you'll frequently be um, blocking hits and so each hit that you block in four seconds scales your damage by four percent and so that's um, what I've selected in terms of my passives so I also want to talk about my gear given that we are a max block character Sybil's Paul is a really great choice the other thing about blade vortex is because it casts blades that um, spin around you that means that each time those each blade hits it's going to give me eight life per hit and so when you have 10 15 20 stacks of these up swirling around you that's a lot of life that you gain on hit um, and so Sybil's Paul is a really nice one so I'm currently using a lionized remorse pinnacle tower shield and so there's several reasons for this one is it's one of the most readily available sort of nice um, shields that isn't too terribly expensive um, at the start of a league because finding basically a high armor life um, shield with a 30% base block is actually pretty uncommon ideally you would probably want to switch this into a rare armor shield that had 30% or more base block life strength and any resist that you can get on it and you'd want a ton of armor as well and the reason we want so much armor on this on the shield is because in our passive tree when we pick up all the block nodes many of them have increased defenses from your shield such as um, defines that 25% increase defenses from your equipped shield or solid solidity solidity Wow, can't pronounce words anyway, but you can see 25% um, shield bonuses there. There's a nice shield um, bonuses note here. We pick one up here, and so we pick this up. We get a lot of um, bonuses from our shield, so that's another reason why we want it to have a lot of armor on it. So I'm currently using a five link chest piece, and we just want armor um, and life and all the resist that we can grab on it. Um, and the fact that this has strength on it is useful as well because we're scaling through iron will and so you want to also try and get strength on as many pieces as possible i don't have it on all my pieces currently um, but my hope is to be able to transition more of them into there and so with the gloves we just want um, resistances and life um, armor and evasion as we need and if you can cap your resistances you want strength on the on your gloves same type of thing for your boots you want life resistances move speed and strength on your helm you want to get as much life and resistances as possible pick up all the armor that you can and then jewelry the same types of things we want um, life and resists picking up strength where you can ideally you want a rustic sash because blade vortex is a physical spell and the implicit on a rustic sash will help scale your damage up and then my rings are just life resistances and strength and then we can actually get spell damage on our neck too so the other thing is that um, that we'll need to make sure that we pick up is intelligence because that's one of the attributes that we lack on the tree and so that's why I've been using a lapis amulet in terms of my flasks um, I run either seethings or bubblings for divine flasks um, the first one I have bleeding and freeze on my two instapots um, I ha also have a heal over time flask and I'm currently still unsure if this is the most efficient or if it needs to be replaced but um, I catalyzed our ideal here and then in terms of my two utility flasks um, I have a chemist's flask or, uh, or a basalt flask specifically with the chemist's prefix because it 
reduces the amount of charges that it takes to use. And so typically, chemists, I believe, takes 40 to 60 charges to give you a 20% fizz reduction. Um, but because we have the chemist prefix, this one only takes 30 to 60. So I can get two uses for a total of 12 seconds of 20% fizz mitigation. The other flask that I use is a sulfur flask. And so this might seem mm, like an uncommon choice. But the biggest reason is, is whenever we're under the influence of it, we get 40% increased damage. And so given again that we're on the south side of the tree and we're trying to boost our damage as much as, much as possible, that's why I've opted for this flasks. Additionally, because when you're winding up with your blade vortexes, you're standing in place, um, the um, regen from the consecrated ground is also nice. So, um, the final bit that I'm going to conclude this video with are the links that I'm using in my gear. So our main link is Blade Vortex, and this is hooked up with Spell Echo, Iron Will, and Controlled Destruction, and those that's your Essential 4 link. And then I added increased duration once I got my 5 link, and this was to really just help make sure I can ramp up the amount of Blade Vortex stacks on rares and bosses to help damage them further. So um, I have Hatred, and then I use Warlord's Mark with Blasphemy for my two auras. And what this does is since we're so frequently in close range of enemies, um, Warlord's Mark's cast on him, and so we leech back both life and mana. And so this helps keep our light, life capped up, as well as our mana so we can keep um, casting. And it also grants us um, Endurance Charges. So on top of the Basalt Flask, um, we have three Endurance Charges, and we also are two points away from being able to pick up a fourth one at high levels. So I also have my Tempest Shield hooked up with Blind and Increased Duration to be um, set off on Cast One Damage Taken. So typically after I first time I take damage in a map, um, Tempest Shield comes up and stays up the whole time. I have um, Whirling Blades hooked up with Faster Attacks, Blood Magic, and this is the key thing, Fortify. So one of the ways that I help reduce a lot of physical damage, which is one of the scariest things in the game, is with Fortify Up, which grants me f um, physical damage reduction. Basalt Flask gives me physical damage reduction, and it's pretty typical to have three Endurance Charges up, which gives me 12% flat fizz reduction. So. Yeah, that's a lot of flat physical reduction, and I also have almost 11k armor. And so physical damage really isn't all that scary, and it also means that any kind of reflect damage that we take from Blade Vortex is pretty negligible. And since we're um, leeching from Warlord's Mark, any LE reflect that we take is negligible as well, so reflect is not an issue at all for us. And so those are two nice map mods that we can run without any issue. Um, over here I have cast one damage taken set up to increase duration with blood rage and this allows me to generate frenzy charges and I have four of these that I'm able to grab because of the cruel or not the cruel the merciless um, bandit rewards. Um, and then over here I also have blood magic hooked up to rally and cry with increased duration and the reason I choose um, uh, this is because rally and cry helps grant some Man, or give some mana regeneration and for reduced regen maps this is a really nice thing because where we get most of our mana back from is leech additionally whenever you come across um, cannot be cursed magic packs or rares that can't be cursed it allows you to still be able to keep up um, enough blade vortex stacks to damage them da uh, damage them down so far, really, the only map mod that I consciously avoid are the Immune to Curses maps. Pretty much every other map mod I've done, um, vulnerability is not a big deal because of so much flat physical reduction as long as you keep it up. Um, and Feeble will slow you down, but it's still doable, and so I still usually run them. Elemental Weakness isn't a problem because resistances are overcapped um, 
And so yeah, it's typically just the cannot be cursed map uh, mod is the one that I avoid. Oh, the other one is, and this only rolls on top tier maps, but either the you cannot leech um, map mod or cannot leech. Um, there's one other I can't think of. And you also can't run blood magic maps. So I think that I'm going to use that to wrap up the video. Um, if you have questions, please go ahead and leave them for me. I'd be happy to address them on the forums. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.